Hey Brewers, it's Paul here, and today we are gonna take a look at how to make hard seltzer at home. We're gonna do it two different ways. One, we're gonna ferment some dextrose. I'm going to use the Mangrove Jack seltzer yeast on one of the batches. This has nutrients and yeast all in one. That's all you need. We're gonna be using two kilograms of dextrose to make a 19 liter batch. Basically, you're gonna to wanna to have somewhere between like four and four and a half pounds or like one and a half and two kilograms, somewhere around there to get a 5% alcohol, which is what I think most people are looking for. On another batch, we're gonna do the same thing, two kg of dextrose. I'm gonna to toss in about an ounce of Fermade K yeast nutrient. There's no nutrients in the dextrose, and we're gonna be using RO water, which also has no minerals. So that's gonna help the yeast just ferment and, and do a good job. And then the easy way, slightly more expensive depending where you live, is just taking some 40% alcohol like vodka and adding it to your keg with some water. I did the math and I believe you want roughly 2.2 liters of vodka into a 19 liter keg topped up with water to get you about 5% alcohol. If you wanna change that, have more or less, just Google uh, alcohol dilution calculator. There are a bunch of free ones and you can kind of scale it to whatever you want. The reason why we're using RO water is you want the water to be super pure. If you use your tap water, chances are once it's done fermenting, your seltzer is gonna be either cloudy or like slightly yellow or brown. And it's just not very, it doesn't look good in a glass. And then finally, we're gonna flavor it with Brewer's Best Natural Extracts. We have a whole bunch of different flavors, so whatever you like, we have like apple, lime, lemon, pineapple, mango, strawberry, kiwi, there's a whole bunch. You can also try using real fruit. I just figure to make this easy, I don't have to worry about secondary fermentation, I don't have to worry about pectic haze or anything like that. And then the other thing you're gonna want is, I'm using a Brusilla just because we don't have a stove here a five gallon or similar size pot on your stove will do the job. You basically want to heat up about half the water to 170 Fahrenheit, 180 Fahrenheit, just to, you know, pasteurize the, everything that you're putting in, the dextrose and stuff. Just taking an extra precaution to make sure you don't get any bacteria in there. And that's basically it. So we're gonna start off by pouring about half of our 19 liters of water into the Brusilla. Again, if you're at home, just put it into your pot on your stove and we'll heat that up to about 180 Fahrenheit. All right, that should be close enough. All right, so we're at 180, our element's on, and we'll be back once we get to that temperature. All right, so we're right around that 180 Fahrenheit. I'm gonna mix in my dextrose. I can't really reach the control panel, so I'm just gonna use the handy dandy wrapped app to turn it off. Turn off our heat. Also heating it up to uh, that 180 is going to make stirring this in a lot easier. Our second kilogram of dextrose. Have the heat turned off. I'm going to stir this in real good. And then if you wanted to, you could use your wart chiller to chill this down quick. I'm just gonna let it sit for a bit. If you were at home doing this on your stove, you can just put this in your kitchen sink with some cold water. That'll help cool it down a little bit quicker. Uh, but I'm just gonna let it sit for a little bit and cool off, and then we can top it off with some uh, cold water in the fermenter. So we'll be right back. All right, so we've got this cooled down to somewhere around 90 Fahrenheit, 85 Fahrenheit. Uh, so we're gonna transfer it into the fermenter and then top it up with uh, some more cold water. We want it to be somewhere around 23-ish Celsius. All right, just pump it in there. Make sure the valve is closed, yep. And this one's gonna get the Mangrove Jacks seltzer yeast that has the nutrients already in it. And notice how nice and clear it is, again, with the RO water. Some people, when they use RO water for making hard seltzer, will add, you know, two, three grams of both gypsum and calcium chloride. But well, you can give that a go if you want to change things up in your process. Uh, I'm going to leave them out this time. Since this yeast has nutrients, and we're adding some Fermade to this one. But it's something that might be worth looking into down the road. And... 
I hear a truck outside. So I better be fast because we're about to get a couple pallets of products here. Okay, so we're going to top it up with the rest of the water. I'm going to quickly go grab a uh, hydrometer and take a gravity reading. You don't have to do this, but I'm curious to see what the uh, original gravity and final gravity will be so we know what the alcohol uh, level is. Just going to give it a quick stir, make sure that everything's mixed properly. And since I'm using a metal spoon, I'm going to make sure I'm not hitting the sides. Don't want to get any scratches in there. Okay, that should be good. All right, I was looking for somewhere around 10.35 or so. And yeah, it looks like around 10.32. And this should finish at like 1.00. Uh, so that should get us right where, about where we want to be. Add in our yeast here. And yeah, there's definitely, I don't know if you can see on camera, there's a bunch of stuff in there, nutrients and whatnot help that yeast ferment the uh, simple sugar. So I'm going to do the exact same thing for the next batch. I'm going to put half the water in, heat it up to about 180, turn off the element, stir in the dextrose. I'm going to add an ounce of uh, Fermade K. If you have Fermade O, that will work uh, as well. It's just the organic version. And then we'll let it chill and we'll transfer it and then we'll come back. Okay, so we have all our ingredients mixed in. I put in about an ounce of Fermade O along with the 2 kg of dextrose. I'm gonna top it up with the rest of the water. Give that a good stir. Just wanna make sure that my gravity reading is accurate. So I dumped it into the uh, Brusilla. So that way it'll recirculate a bit and also splash around when we move it over, which is what we're going to do right now. Make sure the ball valve is closed. Perfect. Uh, one thing I will mention as this is transferring, if at the end of fermentation you go to bottle or keg your uh, seltzer and it's very cloudy, uh, there's two things you can do. If you keg your beer, Add biofine to the keg, rack the seltzer on top. That should drop it clear as long as the beer, uh, sorry, the seltzer is cold in a couple of days. If you can't get your fermenter cold or you aren't kegging, I would suggest using something we use for clarifying wine, which is uh, chidozan and kiesel So basically, you'll put this into the fermenter. Uh, the kiesel first, they're usually uh, marked pack one, pack two. Let it sit. I usually let it go for about an hour and then I'll add the second pack. And then within two days, it'll, it should clear it right up. I've seen wine that looked like cider, basically really opaque to crystal clear in two days with this stuff. So just something to keep in mind if your seltzer doesn't come out crystal clear. So we're transferred over. And I'm just gonna take a quick gravity sample for pitching the yeast. Uh, 
this one it looks to be about the same, that 1030, 1032, somewhere around there, so that's perfect. Uh, we're going to pitch the Lucha Cave Keystone to this one. And from what I've heard from other people is that this can ferment out the seltzer in like two days. So I'm curious to see how it goes compared to the mangrove jacks that's sitting in that one. Could have sprinkled that around a little better, but whatever. Should do the trick. And we're gonna need an airlock. All right, so we're gonna let those ferment and then we'll, in a future video, do a side-by-side -side taste test of them. Typically, seltzers, you're gonna want a little bit more carbonated. So usually your beer, you're gonna have around 2.4 volumes. So your regulator will be 10 or 12 PSI. Uh, for this, I'm probably gonna crank it up to like, I don't know, 40 for like a day, a day and a half, uh, just to get it, you know, really quite carbonated. Two weeks later. So both our seltzers are now ready to be tasted. What I did is after they were done fermenting, I cleared them, kegged them with no flavoring at all, let them sit in the keg for around 10 days. And then I filled these 500 ml bottles and then added, uh, I'll have to check my notes, but I, I believe it's four milliliters of flavoring per bottle. So we're gonna try the Lutra raspberry and the mangrove raspberry first. The Lutra is gonna be on the left, the mangrove is gonna be on the right. The bottle, there's a lot of condensation, but both of these cleared very well. Again, because we used RO water, if you're making a seltzer, I would highly recommend doing that. So picking them up side by side, they're pretty much perfectly clear. They look about the same as far as clarity goes on both. You can really smell the raspberry. This is the Lutra. About the same, it almost smells maybe a little bit sweeter on the Lutra than on the Mangrove Jacks. And I should mention we used Brewer's Best natural uh, flavoring extracts for all of these bottles. That's actually really good. Some seltzers, seltzers I've had have like a kind of sulfur kind of note to them. I don't really detect that in here. Interesting. The Lutra tastes a little bit sweeter and the Mangrove Jacks is like a little bit more crisp. Uh, they're both good, but the Lutra is sweeter. So if you're someone like my wife, for instance, who prefers, you know, sweeter drinks, uh, she would probably like the Lutra. I prefer more of like a, a drier, crisper, not so sweet. So I'd probably go with the Mangrove Jacks. As far as nose and clarity, they, they honestly look the same to me. So let's see how the pineapple turned out. Also, shout out to my wife for these beautiful planters. Very pineapple-y. This one, <clears throat> I, th I feel like I get a bit more of the pineapple on this, on the mangrove jack, sorry. Yep. That's pretty good. It's like plus 35 out here right now and uh, this is actually really refreshing. That was nice. Same thing, I pick up a little bit of sweetness on there. I'm not sure why they finished around the same gravity, like 0.99 or 0.95 or something. Same as the other sample. This feels like it finishes a little bit drier. Uh, again, same final gravity, so I'm not too sure what the deal is with that. I'll have to do some more experiments. But I'm gonna be honest, both these samples so far have tasted way better than I thought they would. This is awesome. I'm definitely gonna make more of these for summer. All right, now onto the watermelon, which is uh, the flavor I've been most interested in. I've played around with watermelon and beer a lot of times, especially in like American style wheats, and I've always loved it. If you're in Manitoba, uh, we actually have a watermelon sour out right now. 
so you can go check it out. It's available at all the craft beer stores and uh, Manitoba Liquor Marts, or come down to the shop. We sell the extract and all grain recipes, so you can make it at home. All right, let's give this a taste. All right, Lutra. Nice. It smells more like um, a Jolly Rancher than, a, than an actual watermelon, but that'll probably ni be nice in the seltzer. Well, that's strange, hold on. Might just be the wind here, but. The nose on the Lutra, you can smell the watermelon, like I'd say almost twice as strongly as the Mangrove Jacks. That's good. Again, more of like a Jolly Rancher watermelon. I'm gonna have to give the win on this one to the Lutra. Uh, I find you taste and smell the watermelon better. Uh, in theory, I put four milliliters in both. Um, maybe I fucked up the <laughs> Mangrove Jack one and it only got two or three. It's not bad. Like if somebody gave me this, I'd be totally happy to drink it. But there you have it. I think that you'll be happy whether you follow the recipe that uses Lutra or the Mangrove Jacks one. If you want something sweeter, definitely go with the Lutra. If you want something that's a little bit more dry, go with the Mangrove Jacks. The other thing is brewing with the Mangrove Jacks yeast is a little bit easier because all the nutrients and yeast are in one simple pack. You don't have to buy like Fermate or anything else and measure that out. Not that it's you know, very difficult to do, but there is the ease of use there. We currently have seltzer kits with like 12 different flavors available on our website. And we put the packages together with the Mangrove Jacks. I just think it'll be easier uh, for, you know, newer brewers to follow along. And we'd probably add the Lutra one at some point in the future. So there you have it. They both tasted great. I, I didn't think I'd like them as much as I did. I'm not gonna lie. I'm really surprised that they turned out well. If you have any questions about this, please leave them down in the comments below. I try to answer every single one of them. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Cheers.